Welcome to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. This show is about Haskell, a purely functional programming language. I'm your guest, Cameron Guerra. I'm an engineer here at IT Pro TV, and with me today is your host, Taylor Fossack. He's the lead engineer here at IT Pro. Thanks for joining me, Taylor. Thanks for having me, Cam. It's How good you doing? to be back. Yeah, right? I, I always love being in here. It's always fun. Mm-hmm. We have this really scary uh, picture behind where Taylor sits. It's yeah, quite it's intimidating. Too bad we can't pick it up on audio. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't. What's his name again? I don't know. I, don't I know. thought you would know. I don't know. Well, anywho, we're here to talk about Haskell, not that guy on the picture, which <laughs> uh, we'll get to that later maybe. Um, but today, I had some questions about parsing in Haskell. I know Haskell is okay. really powerful for that. I was reading an article that a guy just kind of put out about kind of a regex cheat sheet. So I know regex is, is pretty popular for parsing, and there's a lot of power behind it, but it can get confusing and hazy. Yeah. This guy was nice enough to make a cheat sheet for it, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what good is regex compared to maybe some of the other stuff in Haskell? I, I've heard some things like parsing combinators and stuff like that. Like what? What's the difference? So the world for parsing in Haskell is vast. We could fill way more than 15 minutes talking about it. However, you mentioned regular expressions and parser combinators, which are two things I think we can focus in on. And Haskell has these really powerful utilities for parsing, and that makes it an excellent language for prototyping other languages in. A lot of languages have their first implementation written in Haskell or a similar language like OCaml or something like that before they transfer over to a quote-unquote real you know, implementation written in C or C++ or Rust. And the reason for that is that there are so many tools in Haskell for writing powerful parsers that turn text into something useful that you can then do something with. Not everybody implements programming languages. In fact, very few people do. So why is parsing so useful? Why is Haskell so good at it? One answer to that is that parsing comes up everywhere. We were talking over lunch about parsing and we started rattling off all the places in our application that use it and it's basically everywhere Mm -hmm. an http call uses parsing dealing with json uses parsing talking to the database uses parsing parsing some bespoke game replay file format that's parsing too it's everywhere you can't escape it yeah and we don't even necessarily see it because of kind of the things that haskell has already built and all these packages that are already built that handle all these parsing behind the scenes that are just done. But my curiosity is kind of what's 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 under that? You know, like obviously they've built their parsing with something. What what mm-hmm. did they build it with? That's a good question. Uh, just to back up for one second, parsing, it is everywhere and it is hidden from us. And that's not just in Haskell. That's in JavaScript too, in Ruby, mm-hmm. C, every language. There'll be a parser under the covers and then they will expose some interface that is a lot nicer to work with. So like with JSON. Hopefully it's an appropriate interface, <laughs> just saying. Yeah. There are no other sheets. You never know what could be under there. It could be bad. But we're going to move on. We are. Moving right along. For something like JSON, it exposes an interface where you deal with objects and arrays and numbers and strings rather than parsed tokens like a curly bracket and a comma and a quote. Um, So Haskell is really good at providing those things, but it's not the only language that can do that. Hmm. And I'm sorry, I forgot your question. Oh, it's okay. That was a little more intense than... Yeah, you know, my question was a little more intense than we wanted to go, but I, I'd like to touch on the the JSON or the the JavaScript side um, a little bit. Being more background in JavaScript, becoming more fifty fifty now Haskell or JavaScript as far as knowledge is is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, in JavaScript, we we use regex a lot to parse and match and and see if something's what we expect it to be. Yeah, like on a credit card form, right? right. And, and like validation, all that kind of stuff, kind of make sure it's all numbers or you know whatever. And and we tend to just use regular regex because it's the library is pretty easy to use. It's very well resourced. There's yeah. a lot of stuff out there for regex. They're it confuses everywhere. the crap out of me still, and I have to reference it every <laughs> time. But it is still there's a lot out there. Mm-hmm. And I know Haskell, like we can use regex in Haskell for parsing, and like it can do that, but. It's probably a little bit better at just kind of the simple stuff, right? Whereas maybe something like like a programming language is a little more intensive, right? There's a little mm-hmm. more parsing involved um, and a little bit more you know, ro- ro- robustness, I would say, um, that we need to have besides just what regex provides. Yeah, when you look at the spectrum of things that you can parse, on the one end you have something really simple like a credit card number, which let's say just for the sake of argument is 16 digits. That's pretty easy to write a regular expression for. Most people will probably understand what that means. But if you wanted to write a regular expression that parses, say, a Python program, that's not going to work. You're not going to be able to do it. Or if you can, mm-hmm. it's going to be some giant monstrosity that nobody wants to hey, look at. But regex is strong enough. It can do it, okay? <laughs> if it sets its mind to it, it might be able to. 
you were talking about maybe more powerful abstractions we could mm -hmm. use to parse something that's a little richer than a credit card number. Right. And in Haskell, the thing that we reach for is parser combinators. It's not mm -hmm. the only thing that'll do this, but it's the one that I think we're right. most interested in talking uh, uh, about that's today. That's one I, I heard recently and I would like to talk more about for sure. Um, Cause it's definitely pretty interesting that the idea of a combinator in my mind um, sounds like something that we would be, you know, combining these little functions or something together. Exactly. That, that kind of do this action and say, Oh, Hey, I'll take this kind of file or this kind of text and I can give you out this kind of result. Mm -hmm. That's a great explanation of what combinator is. And when you plug it together with something like parser and you end up with parser combinator, what that means is that you can take small parsers that are all pretty simple by themselves. Let's say you have a parser that parses a string of numbers and another one that parses a comma and another one that parses a bunch of white space. You could combine all of those using parser combinators to come up with an expression that says something like parse a number followed by a comma followed by another number or parse any number of numbers, each separated by a comma. Those types of expressions are really easy to do with parser combinators, but surprisingly difficult to do with regular expressions. Mm -hmm. Usually in a language like JavaScript, um, you will use regular expressions as part of otherwise imperative code that parses some stream. So you're like, chew up you know, a bunch of digits and then change your parser state to say, okay, now I'm looking for a comma, and then you go look for a comma, and then you switch back into the I'm looking for numbers thing. Hmm. Whereas in a language like Haskell with parser combinators, you can express that more declaratively and say, I want a bunch of numbers and then a comma and then some more numbers. Mm -hmm. And it reads very well. Hmm. That's really neat. That's nice that it gives us that ability. So like we want to parse some big, you know, maybe weather data for fun, you know, mm -hmm. let's see what some weather trends are and let's write a little app for it. And we would be able to take whatever weather format data is. And, and if we have these simple little parsers that parse each little piece, we can kind of combine those all together just to make, make it all work. And it, it could, you know, and there's type safety, right? Like that's also a big, a big night, like a nicety. It's like with regex, you could mess up a regex expression and never really realize that. Right. Like, yeah, that's something that isn't, is, is dangerous because I could end up in production easy. If you just forget to test this one case and mm -hmm. then you have some sort of leak or something like that somebody could input an invalid credit card and you know then they're not having access to your service or whatever mm -hmm. that or, stuff or they get it for free right or something yeah regexes are pretty or maybe even surprisingly easy to mess up you know you miss one closing parenthesis and your whole regex crashes or you put a dot in the wrong place and it means something drastically different you obviously still can screw things up with parser combinators well yeah you but can, you can screw up anything with right anything. <laughs> if you try hard enough you right. can screw anything up but it's going to be harder with parser combinators because you're still working in the host language in Haskell. You're just writing Haskell code, calling Haskell functions. Works the same as everything else. You mm -hmm. can code review it without having to look over to your cheat sheet and figure out what the heck that new regex <laughs> feature is, mean, what right. that means. Whereas regex is this own very compact little language that sits inside of another language like JavaScript or Ruby or mm -hmm. what have you. And so that makes it really powerful because you can apply all the same tooling that you do for static analysis or just your gut feel for that code looks right and that code doesn't look right. You can apply that to code written with parser combinators versus stuff written, written with regular expressions. Right. No, that makes sense. Uh, and I was like, I don't like this guy's cheat sheet's pretty cool. Um, as far as like just little bits of Haskell regex, you know, little little shortcuts and things that, you know, but it just doesn't seem like it's all that robust. And obviously, it's hard when a tutorial to mm -hmm. really go deep into maybe some of the powerful sides of, of regex. But I just I just see it getting confusing um, if if we were try to go any further than these simple examples. Yeah, um, it can get confusing really fast. And as someone who's spent a lot of my career working with regular expressions, I can say that they feel really good to write because you think like, oh, I'm so clever and I got this really complicated expression down to this really small expression of it. But then six months later, when you come to look at it, you think, I don't know what this means anymore. Right. <laughs> I hope it works. Research and figure it out, which is, which is fair. And there's obviously regex. It's useful. It's got a purpose. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people out there using it. Um, yeah. Which and I think is cool. Earlier, you mentioned something about type safety, which I wanted to come back to because Haskell is a strongly typed language. Not every language is. But even aside from that, when you parse something with regular expressions, the only thing you can get out of it is strings. You match strings and you get them out as groups of strings, and then you have to do something else with that group of strings. Mm. So in a language like 
JavaScript, if you wanted to pull a number out of like a CSV file, you could do that with a regex, but then once you have the number, it's actually a string. So you have to convert it into a number via some other means. In Haskell, when you're using parser combinators, you can have a parser combinator that produces something other than a string. In fact, mm -hmm. almost all of them produce things other than strings. Right. They'll produce a number directly or even a custom data type. So if you have like a user in your system and you want to write it out to come some custom serialized format and then read that back. You can write a parser that will read it directly into a user. There's no intermediate step involved. Right. Which that's nice. And that guarantees that you're going to get the type you expect. Exactly. Um, There's no the chance. The compiler will also tell you that. Mm -hmm. There's no chance in between parsing the thing and turning it into the value that you actually want for anything to go wrong. Cause that happens at the same time. Right. Hmm. That's really neat. I think that's like that value in itself is you know, obviously a testament to, to the strongly typed Haskell language. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as we can, and that leans more towards this parser combinator idea rather than regex even in Haskell because it's regex deals with strings. That's, yeah. that's its nature. Yeah. That's what it's good at. I will say in defense of regexes, one thing they do very well that parser combinators aren't necessarily as good at is substituting something in a string of text. So if you have some big run and you want to replace every letter T with the letter G, for whatever reason. Maybe you're doing DNA sequencing and you're doing some weird stuff. I don't know. A, B, Y, G. No, Something no, like that. Whatever it is. Doing that replacement is super easy with regular expressions because you can match on something and then take an action based on that match. Granted, this isn't a feature of regular expressions themselves, like the mm. computer science concept, but in every language that has regular expressions, there's a mechanism for doing these substitutions. Right. Which is helpful. And, mm -hmm. you know, with, with JavaScript, like it's one of the best ways to be able to somewhat safely guarantee substitution, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're looking through this set of data and you want to say, Hey, like every time you see this word, I, I want you to replace it with this word. Yeah. Um, like that substitute function that is in JavaScript is it's useful for that. It's so easy um, to use. Right. And, and that's the great thing about regex. And I, I don't like, I think it's really good for, for the little stuff, um, but it's just really cool that Haskell offers us these parser combinators that mm -hmm. allow us to get a little, little, more intense um, mm -hmm. without losing understanding and also some type safety. Like that's, I think that's important um, to writing good, robust code that, that doesn't break every, every other week, you know, you're yeah. not finding a bug that, oh, this form isn't validating right anymore, which, I mean, I doubt we would use parser combinators on a form validation because like, but you we could, might. I yeah, mean, you could. there's no reason not to. Yeah, that's fair. I know we're kind of running out on time maybe, but um, I just kind of wanted to cure, have more of a curiosity of like, is there, is there much overhead with understanding parser combinators like if you have a good level uh understanding of haskell like what's what's the what's the level of difficulty of parser combinator parser combinators definitely don't come for free it's not like if you already understand haskell you can jump right into a parser and work it out just fine mm. you'll probably be able to stumble around and figure stuff out and go look at documentation or read something but it won't be immediately won't necessarily be immediately obvious mm. That being said, as I said earlier, you can still lean on your Haskell knowledge. You can look at something and say, oh, that's a function call. That's an operator that's taken this argument or that argument. And you can kind of piece it together. Many of the parser libraries for Haskell share a lot of common um, kind of vocabulary. They use the same words for stuff, which makes it really easy to jump between them. So if you use parsec in one of your libraries and you use mega parsec in the other or mega. trifecta or you know, there's a bunch. Um, cool. You, you'll be able to jump between those without too much trouble. So your knowledge is transferable between them. Mm -hmm. There's still the downside of, as you mentioned at the top of the show, regexes are everywhere. Right. Every language basically has them. Everybody, most working programmers know what they mean. And parser combinators are not like that at all. They're their own little thing. Right. So there's a little bit of mental complexity there, but mm -hmm. the payoff of, of safety and... and um, I think it's worth it. Right. It, it's worth it in the end. I mean, that's... Kind of how a lot of things are. I mean, Haskell's great, but there are some confusing aspects, you know, mm -hmm. conduit and lenses and like all these different topics and parts of companies are probably in that list. Yeah. It's actually, in my mind, very similar to lenses in that it's a mm. very powerful abstraction that gives you something that's hard to get in other languages. And it does it in an expressive way that looks kind of impenetrable at first. But then as you come to understand it, you realize, no, this actually makes a lot of sense. It's just weirder. It's different than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And with lenses and parser combinators, both, they have ties into other parts of Haskell. So as you understand them better, you sort of get a different or deeper understanding of other parts that you've used before that you now see in a different light. So 
with parser combinators, they frequently use this weird operator that's like an asterisk and then a greater than sign hmm. or the other way around. Hmm. And you can view this in a parser as like, do this, but throw away the result and then do this other thing. And it turns out that that's super useful and shows up in lots of other places in Haskell. And you'd be like, oh, that's this, the same concept that I was using over here for parsers is applicable over here where I'm running servers. And right. it's just kind of strange to see that same thing in these two wildly different places. Hmm. That's really cool. And I think that's really, I mean, that's been a great kind of conversation on parsing in Haskell and, you know, some of the differences between like, you know, the regex and parser combinators and some of the more you know, verbosity. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> I think verbosity I, is a word. I, I keep trying to use these fancy words and I probably <laughs> just should and I should just let it be. Uh, but bottom line is it's powerful, right? It gives us... It is. It's Haskell is great for parsing. Like it mm -hmm. is a language that a lot of people use to parse, and that's really cool. I've never had like just time to be like, hey, like let me write this parser for this random thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I know another one of um, our coworkers here, Justin. He was writing a, a parser in Rust, and he asked me questions because you know he doesn't deal with the functional paradigm that much. But mm -hmm. um, he was just kind of like, what is going on here? And I'm like. I can kind of see what's going on, like obviously just from the knowledge of like the functional programming paradigm. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's just cool that Haskell is m more commonly the the one you you choose to write a parser and just to at least prototype that parser, mm -hmm. um, just because it's quick and, and it it's works the way you expect it to work and there's type safety. So it's a great language for it. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for talking with me about parsing in Haskell this week, Cameron. No, thank you for having me, Taylor. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's really cool to kind of hear your background and your your knowledge and understanding of, of parsing in Haskell. I hope I've helped you understand parsing in Haskell a little better, and I hope I've helped our listeners understand parsing and how it compares with regular expressions in other languages like JavaScript. Yeah, and I'm excited about topics to come, too. I think, I think our listeners got some cool stuff coming. Thank you for listening to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. This has been Episode 7. If you liked our show, find out more at our website, haskellweekly.news. Thanks again for listening. I've been your host, Taylor Fossack. We'll see you again next week. Adios. Adios.